ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحديث حديث محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدع وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم indeed all praise is for allah subhanahu wa taala we praise him repent to him and seek his forgiveness and help we seek refuge in allah from the evil of ourselves and of our deeds whomsoever allah guides none can lead astray and whomsoever allah leads astray none can guide and i bear witness that none has the right to be worshiped except allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and he has no partner and i bear witness that our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his slave and messenger allah almighty says ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqatih وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ O you who believe fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he should be feared and die not except in the state of Islam Today the topic of discussion is the knowledge of the unseen this is very important topic as well as every muslim should know this topic belongs to our beliefs yani aqida because the knowledge of unseen the every hidden knowledge which is belong to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nobody can claim that he knows everything he knows the hidden knowledge which we can say ilmul ghaib this knowledge can only be told by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what is the meaning of the unseen unseen we can say what is hidden from people of future and past occurrences and what is not seen is exclusive to allah's knowledge allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran qul la ya'lamu man fis samawati wal ardi ghaiba illa allah none is the heavens and the earth knows the unseen except allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is the major and basic belief that everything should be known by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nobody can claim that he knows the unseen <coughs> he has the knowledge of unseen because this is something which which take a person to disbelieve and to to kufr because these days you can see that lot of people are claiming that they know the unseen they have the knowledge they can tell and they can help out the people in their hidden matters in their problems where they have lost something or they have some problems they can tell what is their problem and what is the solution this is something which which is disbelieved because allah subhanahu wa taala says in the quran that except allah subhanahu wa taala nobody knows the unseen qul la ya'lamu man fis samawati wal ardi al ghaiba illa allah none is the heavens and the earth knows the unseen 
except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second thing, even the prophets and the angels, they also don't know the unseen, but <clears throat> what specially Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them through wahi and through the angels, what Allah told them, they knew that, but what Allah will not tell them, they didn't know. عَالِمُ الْغَيْبِ فَلَا يُظْهِرُ عَلَىٰ غَيْبِهِ أَحَدًا إِلَّا مَنْ اِرْتَضَىٰ مِنْ رَسُولِ He is the knower of the unseen and he does not reveal his secrets to anyone except to him whom he chooses, namely a messenger of his. This is also mentioned in the Quran. So, we should know very well that if someone is claiming that he can tell something which is not normal, for example, we have to understand by an example <coughs> what is mean by unseen. Because lot of deviated sects in these days, they are claiming regarding Prophet Wasallam that he has the knowledge of the past and the present and the future until the day of judgment. And they have disbelieved and they have their wrong beliefs due to this wrong concept that he is still alive in his grave in this world, which is a wrong belief. Prophet <coughs> he is alive, but not in this world. He is in Barzakh. The word of Barzakh, which means hiding, which means curtain, which means to hide. We cannot see beyond this world. So, this is a wrong belief. On, due to this belief, they claim that Prophet ﷺ has all the knowledge of unseen, before, after, and the present, present, future, and the past. This is the wrong belief. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, very clearly, كُلْ لَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ الْغَيْبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ None is the heavens and the earth knows the unseen except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also in other chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cleared this thing by Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قُلْ لَا أَمْلِكُ لِنَفْسِ نَفْعًا وَلَا ذَرْعًا إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ وَمَا مَسَّنِ يَسُوءُ in ana illa nazirun wa bashirun likawmi yu'minun. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa say, I have no power to bring a benefit or a harm to myself except that what Allah wills. If I had the knowledge of the unseen, walau kuntu a'lamul ghaybal, if I had the knowledge of the unseen, I would have accumulated a lot of good things. Prophet ﷺ, Allah is informing us through this Qur'an by Prophet ﷺ, O Prophet ﷺ, tell them, say, I have no power to bring a benefit or a harm to myself except that which Allah wills. What it means? Why Allah is mentioning this in Surah Al-A'raf, Ayah 188? The people who are claiming that Prophet ﷺ was the knowledge of unseen for the future, for the past and for the present, they are wrong in this statement because Quran is saying something else. Kulla amlikuli nafsi naf'am wala dar'a illa ma sha Allah. Say I have no power to bring a benefit or a harm to myself except what Allah wills. وَلَوْ كُنْتُ أَعْلَمُ الْغَيْبَ لَسْتَكْسَرْتُ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ لَسْتَكْسَرْتُ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ وَمَا مَسَّنِ يَسُّو If I had the knowledge of the unseen, I would have accumulated a lot of good things and no evil would have ever touched me. This is a very clear proof which Quran is presenting for our knowledge to inform us that if Prophet ﷺ has the knowledge of unseen, he will not have to face any problem, any difficulty in his life. But we can see very easily that he has suffered a lot 
in the mission of Dawa. He has suffered lot of difficulties in the battles by the Mushrikeen of Makkah. We can see that how they have tortured him, how they have tried to defeat him and they have put all their efforts to defeat Islam, to torture the people of Islam, the Sahaba, the companions, the Prophet ﷺ. In the battle of Uhud you can see that Prophet ﷺ was fell and his tooth has been broken and he has been tortured. How? These all are the matters of unseen. And on the same time, we, we will, in the end, inshallah, we will give the examples by the life of Prophet ﷺ to prove that he don't have the knowledge of unseen except what Allah has sent through Wahi, through Hazrat Jibreel ﷺ, that he knows. And what Allah didn't tell him, that is not known to him. So, first of all, we have to differentiate between the unseen and the seen. The people are confusing this issue that they are claiming that we are not saying that itself Prophet ﷺ knows something. We agree that Allah told Prophet ﷺ and then He knows. But they are wrong in their concept. Because they are claiming that Prophet ﷺ itself, he knows everything. And he knew everything for the past, for the future and for the present. Let's suppose for an example, we are sitting in a house where two or three rooms, we are sitting in one room and we don't know what is happening in the other room. If we are sitting in one room, without looking in the other room or without going or without any person who came from the other room, if we are sitting in one room and we can tell what is happening in the second room, it means we have the knowledge of unseen. Because we are sitting at one place, we are not going to the other room. Nobody is coming to us, no messenger is coming to us who is telling us what is happening in the other room and we are telling that this is happening in the second room. So this is the knowledge of unseen. But let's suppose if we are sitting in one room and we are not moving from this room to the other room, but some person is coming from other room and he is telling us that in the other room this work has happened or this is happening. So now how we came the knowledge, how we gain the knowledge? How we came to know what is happening in the other room? Somebody told us. When somebody told us, then we know it means that we don't have the knowledge of unseen. We don't know actually what is happening in other room. Instead, somebody has told us and then now we came to know what is happening. So this is the different difference of unseen by itself or by telling some, by the, by by some resources we are going to know what is happening. The same situation here, the difference between the information given to Prophet ﷺ by Wahi or by the Messenger or by Hazrat Jibreel ﷺ. So when Allah sent the Messenger or the Angel to inform Prophet ﷺ, it doesn't mean that this is the knowledge of unseen and he knows by himself. If the angel is coming, he is giving some information, Prophet ﷺ was delivering that information to people. So this is not something which we can say ilmul ghaib, which is knowledge of unseen, because when he has been informed and he informed the people, so it is no more the knowledge of unseen. The knowledge of unseen is that which has not been informed and he can tell by himself that this is happened, this is knowledge of unseen. And on number of examples we can give where it is proved that Prophet ﷺ don't have the knowledge of unseen from himself that he can tell anything, anywhere, anytime.
This has been proved by Quran in Surah Kahf. We can see when the infidels, when these mushrikun, they ask some question from Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When he asked some question from Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Okay, come tomorrow, I will tell you." But he forgot to say, "Insha Allah." At that time, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has in his mind that Allah subhanahu wa taala will send the Jibril, and he will tell me. the answers of the questions and i will tell them but allah subhanahu wa taala wants to give some message to give some lesson that don't say in your comments in your conversation never tell that i will do this instead say i will do this inshallah and if you will forgot when you remember say inshallah i will do this so for the 40 days Hazrat Jibril alayhi salam didn't come and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was very much worried why because the people of Makkah the mushrikeen they are joking with prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they are irritating him they are trying to let down him that you are saying that you have the knowledge and you have the uh, angel who is coming to give you the different type of knowledge now where is the angel either maybe he is not any more with you so these things and these type of words and they are just discouraging him to saying that you are claiming that you are the true prophet of allah subhanahu wa taala but now what happened why you are not answering our questions but how he can answer if he has the knowledge of unseen anywhere everywhere any time why he has to wait for 40 days this shows that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam cannot tell anything any time until allah subhanahu wa taala will inform him so that's why 40 days he has to wait and after that when the wahi came and the first thing what what prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been advised from allah subhanahu wa taala never say that i will do this but say that inshallah i will do this and when you will forget to say when you remember say again inshallah i will do this and then the questions has been answered and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave the answers to mushrikeen so this is an example one example that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wants to tell something but at that time he has to wait until the wahi will come and allah subhanahu wa taala in lot of places allah mentioned this thing in the quran wa indahu mafatihul ghaib la ya'lamuha illa hu that nobody has the keys of the unseen except allah subhanahu wa taala allah alone has the keys of the unseen what it means wa indahu mafatihul ghaib la ya'lamuha illa hu وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَمَا تَسْقُطُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا وَلَا حَبَّةٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ وَلَا رَطْبٍ وَلَا يَابِسٍ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ الله has clearly mentioned in surah an'am ayah 59 with him or with him all the keys of the unseen no one knows them but he knows what is in the land and the sea وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ what is in the land and what is in the sea وَمَا تَسْقُطُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا no leaf ever falls but he knows about it even a single leaf from the tree if he will fell down allah subhanahu wa taala knows about that leaf and there is no grain in the dark layers of the earth or anything fresh or dry that is not recorded in the manifest book so these are the proofs which allah subhanahu wa taala given in the quran but our problem is we are not understanding the quran we are not getting the true knowledge of islam 
what we are spreading that is just rumors with no basis and with no proofs and in these days you can see a lot of people who are claiming this is the one aspect of the uh, of this uh, topic that people are claiming that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has the knowledge of unseen but in other side we can say that lot of people who are claiming that they have the knowledge of unseen they can tell people for their future endeavors they can tell they can give the solution for the future they can tell if they have some problem how to re- resolve this problem if they something has been something has been taken from them or something has been theft from their uh, their wealth they can tell all these things are from shaitan because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly mentioned that every unseen knowledge belongs to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so i have recited one ayah which is very much clear which is showing that every time any prophet cannot tell anything alimul ghaibi fala yuzhiru ala ghaibihi ahada illa man irtada min rasul he is the knower of unseen and he does not reveal his secrets to anyone except to him whom he chooses namely a messenger of his that if he wants to give some information he can give but by whom he wants nobody can claim that any time anywhere anything he has the knowledge if somebody is claiming this he is a kafir anyone else who claims the knowledge of the unseen by any means is a liar and a kafir whether the claims such a palm or cup reading or by divining or sorcery or astronomy or otherwise the people are practicing these days sorcery astronomy lot of things which are not according to islam as for the claims of imposters and liars that they can locate lost things and report about the conditions of absent people or causes of certain sicknesses by alleging that so and so so be with you and cause your sickness all these are only because they employ jinn and devils this is the other aspect where it is mentioned that they are getting help from the jinn and shayateen because they employ jinn and devils the people who are practicing fortune telling or astronomy or other things which are not allowed in islam like sorcery all these things they can do by the help of the jinn or shayateen by the devils telling people that what they are suffering is a result of these works only to deceive them and on this topic regarding this sheikh al islam ibn taymiyah rahimahullah said a diviner used to have a shaitanic companion who informed him about many unseen things by eaves dropping they used to confuse the truth with lies he went on to say that among us such people was that to whom shaitan would bring him fruits sweets and other things that were not available in diviner's location other the jinni companion would fly them to makka jerusalem and or elsewhere fortune tellers may rely on astrology the study which assumes and professes to interpret the influence of heavenly bodies on human affairs they study the effects of the astrological conditions events such as the times of wind and rain the changes of prices and other conditions and they claim that they are associated with movement of planets in its orbits when they become neat or distant from each other so based on such information the alleged that he who consummates marriage or travel or who is born when certain star is at certain position certain things will happen certain things will have happened to him of good or bad omen horoscope columns are usually published in cheap magazines to predict future events based on the signs of the zodiac 
this is a very normal practice which in these days and from the earlier time people are very keen to read their stars what is your star if you are sagittarius you are taurus you are this you are that this is a very how your coming week will be before these things are present in the magazines and all other things now these things are very advanced now you can see these things in the internet or in the uh, on on your pcs on your computers you can how your week will be horoscopes usually published in cheap magazines to predict future events based on the signs of the zodiac all these are the for, forbidden things islam has forbidden these things because islam in islam it is clearly mentioned allah has mentioned that who has who has who is not uh, who is not uh, believing on the fortune telling but he has just he has a curiosity he is just visiting a fortune teller he is just visiting him due to curiosity but he he is not believing what he is saying the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam clearly laid down principle which clearly forbade any form of visitation of fortune tellers and in the hadith az safiya reported from hafsa hafsa radhiyallahu ta'ala anha wife of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the salah prayer of whoever approaches a fortune teller and asks him about anything will not be accepted for 40 days and nights this is for whom prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam clearly mentioned that the salah the prayer of whoever approaches a fortune teller and asks him about anything will not be accepted for 40 days and nights he is not believing on the fortune teller he has no belief he is just going to check what he says he has just a curiosity he just want to know let's see what he is saying but if due to curiosity if someone is visiting the fortune teller his salah his prayer will not be accepted for 40 days and nights and the punishment in this hadith is for simply approaching a fortune teller and asking him questions out of curiosity and this prohibition is further supported by maawiya ibn al hakam as salamis hadith in which he said o messenger of allah verily there are some people among us who visit oracles the prophet the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied do not go to them and the other hadith in which it is mentioned here only you can see the severe punish punishment has been assigned for only visitation because it is the first step to belief in fortune telling if somebody is visiting the fortune teller and he will predict something if that will come true by chance or by the help of the devils or by shaitanic or devils help or by the jinns if from 100 lies if one prediction is true so the person who is visiting he will believe him he will be a very strong belief that the fortune teller has the has something and he is telling the truth and he will forget the 99 lies but he will remember only the one truth and his iman his faith will be destroyed so if one went there doubtful about its reality and some of the fortune tellers prediction come true one will surely become a true devotee of the fortune teller and and an believer in fortune telling but one more ruling on this visiting of fortune teller the individual who approaches a fortune teller is still obliged to make his compulsory salah throughout the 40 day period because it doesn't mean that if in the hadith it is mentioned that his salah will not be accepted for 40 days and night he will no more offering his salah because this is the obligation and there are two things in the salah one to remove the obligation and the other to earns uh, earns him a reward so if 
he is visiting a fortunate teller, he still have an obligation to offer salah. Even he don't, he will not get the reward. So he has to offer his 40 days salah, even though, though he gets no reward from his prayer. If he abandons the salah altogether, he has committed another major sin. So this is similar to the Islamic ruling in the case of Salah on or in stolen property according to the majority of jurists, jurists they hold that whatever obligatory Salah is performed it produces two results under normal circumstances it removes the obligation of that prayer from the individual and the second it earns him a reward so if Salah is performed on or in stolen property it removes the obligation of Salah, but it is devoid of reward. So, the second thing, one who is visiting the fortunate teller just for curiosity, his prayer for 40 days and nights will not be accepted. The other thing, who believes in fortunate tellers? The Islamic ruling with regard to anyone who visits a fortunate teller believing that he knows the unseen and the future is that of kufr disbelief. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Al-Hasan both reported from the Prophet sallallahu that he said, whosoever approaches a fortunate teller and believes what he says has disbelieved in what was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu wasallam. So, how much severe punishment and how much severe act is this? That in one aspect, who is visiting just due to curiosity, his prayer will not be accepted for 40 days and nights. And the other, who is visiting due to belief, he is believing that the fortunate teller has the true knowledge and what he is telling he is right. So for, his, for him, Whosoever approaches a fortunate teller and believes what he says has disbelieved in what was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu And this visitation and such a belief assigns to creation some of Allah's attributes with regard to the knowledge of the unseen and the future. Consequently, it, it destroys Tawheed al-Asma wa sifat this is the one aspect of the Aqidah, Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat. Because we are giving the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to His creation. We are saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also knows the unseen and the fortunate teller is also He knows the unseen. So this is shirk. This is shirk in Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat. And this is the major and the base of our faith and Islam because this is not a small issue we cannot ignore this if we are involved in the shirk maybe that is a shirk in asma of sifat shirk in uluhiya or shirk in ibadah or shirk in rabubiya in any type of shirk if we are involved in the shirk Allah will not forgive the person who is committing shirk if he will die on the same condition and he will not repent from his shirk. إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ هَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنْصَارِ So, this to visiting a fortunate teller, believing on him, it's not a small matter. We have to keep in this mind that this type of visitation take somebody in shirk and that type of shirk which is a shirk al akbar which is the great sin in the shirk al azul munazim or if someone is involved in the shirk al akbar if he will die on that in that condition he will not repent he has to go in the hellfire and he will never be came out of that so now some proofs from the quran I will present in front of you and after that inshallah we will uh, finalize our today's lecture.
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly states in the Quran, I already recited this ayah, وَإِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِهُ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُوهَا إِلَّا هُ With him are the keys to the unseen and none knows it, the unseen except him alone. وَإِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِهُ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُوهَا إِلَّا هُ And the second thing, قُلْ لَا أَمْلِكُ لِنَفْسِي نَفْعٌ وَلَا دَرَى إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ وَلَوْ كُنْتُ عَالَمُ الْغَيْبَ لَاسْتَكْسَرْتُ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ وَمَا مَسَّنْ يَسُوْ This is a very clear proof in Surah Al-A'raf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say I have no power to bring good to myself not harm but it is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills if it were that I knew the unseen, I would have multiplied the good and no evil would have touched me. This is the proof. If Prophet ﷺ in his whole life, he has not faced any difficulty, any problem, any evil, then the claim of the people who say that Prophet ﷺ has the knowledge of unseen for the past, for the present and for the future, it can be justified. But this ayah clearly proves that Prophet ﷺ has been tortured, Prophet ﷺ has faced lot of difficulties, lot of problems, he has been given the poison. This is an example of Prophet ﷺ that he didn't have the knowledge of unseen. What is the example? When a Jewish has invited him for the lunch, he went he accepted his invitation and Sahaba accompanied him. He went there and he took a bite from the piece of meat. He has roasted the piece of the meat and Prophet ﷺ has taken one bite. The bite has told Prophet ﷺ, then don't swallow me because the poison has been included in me and he spit the bite. This is how he came to know? If he has knew this before, he will not take the bite. But at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so I was giving the example from Surah Al-A'raf and Surah Namad, قُلْ لَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ الْغَيْبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Say none in the heavens nor the earth knows the unseen except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and قُلْ لَا أَمْلِكُ لِنَفْسِي نَفْعًا وَلَا دَرْعَا إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ وَلَوْ كُنْتُ عَالَمُ الْغَيْبَ لَاسْتَكْسَرْتُ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ وَمَا مَسَّنْ يَسُوْءِ I have no power to bring good to myself, not avert harm, but it is only as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. If it were that I knew the unseen, I would have multiplied the good and no evil would have touched me. So I was giving the example when Prophet ﷺ has accepted the invitation of the Jews and he visited him accompanied by the Sahaba and he has taken the bite of the meat in which the poison has been included and he, the meat was poisoned. Prophet ﷺ, if he has the knowledge of unseen, he never took a bite in his mouth. But when he has taken the bite, the bite itself Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a mozza, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done this on Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the bite has informed Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that don't swallow me because the poison has been included in me and he spit that bite. But in the, in the meantime, one sahabi, one companion, he already taken the bite and he died at the spot. This is a very clear proof. The, those who are claiming that Prophet ﷺ has the knowledge of unseen, why he has taken the bite? Why he has put that bite in his mouth if he has the knowledge of unseen? It shows that he don't have the knowledge of unseen. And the second thing, one hadith in Bukhari also, and in Surah Luqman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, إِنَّ اللَّهَ إِنْدَهُ إِلْمُ السَّاعَ وَيُنَزِّلُ الْغَيْسِ وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْأَرْحَامِ وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ مَا زَا تَكْسِبُ غَدَى 
وما تدري نفس بأي أرض تموت إن الله عليم خبير Verily the knowledge of the or is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone It is he who sends down the rain وَيُنَزِّلُ الْغَيْسِ He who sends down the rain وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْأَرْحَامِ And knows the contents of the wombs وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ مَاذَا تَكْسِبُ غَدَا And he only knows what he will earn tomorrow وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُوتُ And in which land he will die إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ خَبِيرٌ Allah is all knowing and aware This is the very clear proof Five things are mentioned here The knowledge of the last hour When the rain will come And also what is in the mother's womb And third Fourth What anybody will do tomorrow And on which land Someone will die. These five th- five things nobody knows except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in Sahih Bukhari, Imam Bukhari rahimahullah, he also elaborated this issue by saying, An Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha qalat, من أخبرك أن محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم يعلم الخمس التي فقد أعزم الفرية She said If someone inform you that Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was known to these five things he is a great liar She is verifying that Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم doesn't knowledge of these five things and this is one example and in other hadith in Sahih Bukhari Imam Bukhari rahimahullah narrated Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wallahi la adri wa ana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma yuf'alu bi wa la bikum Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that by God by Allah لا أدري I don't know وأنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم and I am the prophet of Allah سبحانه وتعالى ما يفعل بي ولا بكم what will happen to me and what will happen to you he is telling about the day of judgment and he is clearly in Sahih Bukhari Imam Bukhari رحمه الله was narrated that prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم clearly mentioned and he, he was claiming that he is the prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but he don't know what will happen to him and what will happen to you so this is the very clear proof from a hadith and from the ayat of Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly mentioned that the knowledge of unseen only belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we pray from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get to give us the true knowledge of Islam and Tawheed and also that knowledge should be implemented on our lives because in this current time in these days everybody is claiming that he is on the true path but only the true path is that which is Prophet ﷺ has informed us Ma ana alayhi wa ashabi this is only the true path or in the Quran Allah has mentioned وَأَنَّ هَذَا صِرَاطِي مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوهُ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبُلْ فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ This is the only true path Prophet ﷺ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran O Prophet ﷺ say وَأَنَّ هَذَا صِرَاطِي مُسْتَقِيمًا This is the my, this is my straight path so we have to follow this and he informed us don't follow the other paths otherwise you will stray from the straight path so we have to follow the straight path we have to pray from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will give us courage he will give us the knowledge and he give us istiqama 
he gave us consistency on our good deeds and he gave us courage to correct our beliefs our aqida and he gave us courage to be on that straight path so from after this i will finish my today's uh, discussion inshallah everything anything which is correct this is from allah subhanahu wa taala and anything which is not correct that is from me or from shaitan i seek forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa taala rabbana taqabbal minna innaka antas samiul alim wa tub alaina innaka antat tawwabur rahim